Today, we're going to be using Conic Gradient to see how we can make gradients just like what you see on the screen right now. Hi there, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. Continuing a little dive into gradients, we're going to be looking at conic gradients. They're supported by Chrome at the moment, which is why I'm in Chrome right now instead of Firefox like usual. Um, but even though they're not supported in other browsers at the moment, we can add support to it without too much difficulty. So we're going to be looking at the basic functionality and how I created all of these. And then we're also going to see how you can ensure that it works in all browsers. Now, one thing that's really important, it is a five minute Friday and I'm not going to get this done in five minutes. I tried really hard, um, but just to get through some of these more fun ones at the bottom and to un get into the polyfill and how that works, um, five minutes isn't going to happen, but we're still going to keep it nice and sweet and short. Let's jump right into it. So just really fast, before we get really started in this, I just want to show you, I've already set up um, what each gradient is going to be using here. So the width and the height and just a border radius of 50% on there to make it into a nice little circle. Uh, so for my first gradient here, what I'm going to do is do a background uh, image, just like any other one. It is a background image. And on here we can do a conic gradient. And I'm just going to type in red comma blue. And just like a regular gradient would work, you get a red to blue, but a conic gradient goes in a circle like this. So we get this weird looking thing just like that. Now, one thing we can also do with this, I'm going to copy what we have here and move on to my gradient two and paste it in. And what we can do instead is have, uh, we can say where we want it from. So just like you normally do like from left, from right, things like that, you can say from, but in this case, because it's a circle from 45 degrees and we're starting at like a 45 degree mark. Um, another thing we can do is if we need to, we can come in and have more colors. So I could go uh, red, blue, yellow, green, and have as many colors in there as you want. So there's no limitation obviously on that. Um, another thing you can do is if uh, you want to go back to the starting color, so you want it, you don't want this harsh line like we have right there. Um, I can just do a red to blue to, oops, red. And then it's going to go red into blue and then back into red and it gives you a nice soft transition and you can start getting something that looks a little bit nicer just like that. Now where things get even more interesting um, is you can control where they are all at. So you can do this with percentages. So say I'll add in a, a yellow here, yellow, not rello, yellow. Um, so when you have this, it's splitting them all up, but you can also control where they're going to be. So I can say red to 45 degrees. Um, and then my red is going from there to 45 degrees and then it's starting the transition. My blue can go to 190 degrees. Um, so it's the blue is in the 190 degrees or let's just bring this up really big like 325 just to squish whoops degrees um, just to really squish that down so you can see it makes a much softer transition over here and then finally at the 325 we're getting deeper into the blue which then has to transition quickly into my yellow um, so you can do this with percentages as well but because you're working on a circular basis degrees I find a lot easier you're just working with a total of 360. Um, you can also do color stop. So I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to do a background uh, color of green. And what we can do here uh, then is come in with my background grady, uh, background image. But instead of a conic gradient, we can do a repeating uh, conic gradient. And this is interesting because, well, you can repeat stuff. So let's just say I do um, red to 10 degrees, blue to 30, or say 40 degrees. Um, so it's going red to blue and I get sort of like this weird windmill thingy coming on. But uh, one way you can get w rid of this weird sort of thing that's going on is we could say uh, red 0 comma red 10 and then we could do a blue 10 degrees comma uh, blue 40 degrees and it sort of makes these hard lines instead of being um, stuck. And uh, the reason I did an RGBA there is because instead of the red here if I did an RGBA of zero 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 and we're going to copy that a few times um, to replace here and then my blues will be replaced by the same thing but say at a point five uh, so you can get sort of this gradient effect going on but it's the transparency that's causing it all so here now if I change this to yellow I get uh, a yellow coming through or if I do red so you can change the background color and have the overall effect looking kind of cool um, and the last thing we're going to do here with my gradient 7 uh, the first thing I'm going to do is 
uh, border radius of zero uh, to turn off the border radius so it's actually a square. Uh, so just to show you on any of these, you can border radius zero. Um, and you can see it, it is working on that too. It's just, I find it easier to explain what's happening on a circle with these. So border radius of zero. And then what we're gonna do here is a background image uh, conic gradient of, uh, let's just do yellow comma black. Um, but that gives us something like that. So what I can do is actually do a yellow zero and then a yellow uh, 90 degrees. Um, so what I've done here is made like a little checker pa um, checkerboard pattern. So if I turn this off, it makes a little bit more sense based on what we were just looking at with this one, where I'm going from zero to 90, then from 90 to 180, from 180 over to 270, and then from 270 over to here. So if you look at the code, it's zero, 90, and then my black starts from 90 to, whoops, 90 to 180. My yellow goes from 180 to 270, and then my black from 270 to 360. So that gives us that. So when I have my border radius off, it sort of gives us a little bit of a background checkered pattern. And then what we can do is background size, and we can do like a 3M, 3M on here. And just like that, we get a start getting a checkerboard pattern like that, because it's taking what we created here and shrinking it down. Of course, you can control this as much as you want and make any sort of cool things out of that, um, well, whatever you would need for it. So that's great, everything is working, but there is one problem. If I go over into um, my uh, Firefox here, these conic kind of gradients aren't working and that just is no fun. So a way you can actually get them to work is, uh, let's just bring this back up, we can add in Leah Veru's amazing polyfill here. Um, this also has, um, an, if you're into post CSS, uh, it is, where is it, where is it? It's here, post CSS has a conic kind of gradient which is using what she already created. Um, there's also some really amazing examples and cool stuff, some of which I have been inspired from uh, for what we're going to be looking at. So if you want to check this out, by all means, you, I think you should. And if you want to see how you can integrate it, well, it's really, really easy. Um, all you need to do is link to two different things. So you need to link to prefix free and you need to link to her um, JS file here. So you'd get your, you know, download this. Um, and put it into your own file. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna steal this just cause it's for a code pen. And in my code pen, whoops, under my JS tab here. So the first thing I want is the prefix free, which I can find here, prefix free. Uh, this one I can get rid of cause that was a mistake. And then here I can paste in, um, so I'm gonna be, you just in your own file would wanna link not like this, but in your HTML, you'd be linking to a separate JS file. One of them going to prefix free and one of them going to, um, Leah Veru's uh, JS plugin, which you can download, have that as your own file on your computer. Um, and with that done, my pen has been saved. So let's open up Firefox and hit refresh. And just like magic, they're all working now. So it works really, really well. It's super easy uh, to implement and it makes sure that it works in all browsers. So really, really handy. Um, it simplifies the syntax for color stops and other stuff uh, where you can read about on her site for it. So uh, head on over to the page for that if you want more information on those. And there we have it. That's it. I hope you liked it. These are really fun. And this is just scratching the surface of what you can do with them. If you want to see some really amazing things you can do with them, check out Lyra Vero's page for them, where there are some really impressive examples of what you can pull off with conic gradients. If you see yourself using conic gradients in any way, let me know about it in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. If you liked it and you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. And as usual, a massive thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here at my channel. Have a fantastic weekend. And of course, until next time, don't don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.